Hello, everyone. Dale Pinkard here at TradeGateHub.com. Uh, in honor of it being a Central Bank Week, Central Bank Day, I'm wearing this uh, shirt from our friends at Forex Live. Can anyone guess who's playing uh, the guitar here? Looks like it's a Gibson. I'll give you a hint. It uh, was the Euro Bears favorite central banker. Anyone know who this is? It might be the quiz question today. Okay, I'm I'm not going to tell anyone. Maybe that'll be the question. All right. So let's talk about this today in the Fed, and uh, you know this is a pretty important uh, day. I think that the market is real bared up with uh, the Fed uh, possibly giving us a double taper for Christmas. Uh, in fact, I've heard from other analysts, uh, normally there's not um, real dramatic action taken by the Fed right before Christmas. Uh, it's kind of a tradition. I heard a former Fed official talk about that. And uh, I can remember another December where uh, <clears throat> Something similar on a different scale happened, but that's going to be a quiz question, too. So I know you guys are thinking about how do I make money? And what you might want to be thinking is how do I preserve capital on a day like this? So if you want to trade and, and keep in mind, the ECB's meeting this week, BOJ's meeting this week, central banks are just having a year end party. So there are a lot of red events the rest of the week as well, although this is really the ball game with what happens with the Fed here. So uh, the way I, I look at things is really not to try and predict how the market will react to whatever the Fed does, uh, especially whatever the Fed says at the presser, and that you're better off being flat and letting the market have its initial reaction to what uh, Paul says today. And then if it gets to certain levels, uh, both on the upside and the downside that you think are good entries uh, that you have planned for, like before they got there, uh, then you can trade. But it's my strong advice not to try and predict, make a red or black bet that any instrument's gonna be higher off the gun or lower off the gun based upon uh, basically a 50-50 outcome of what's going to happen. Uh, my, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that uh, maybe the market thinks that Powell's going to be more hawkish than he'll end up being. So, uh, you know, a few ideas. Uh, right now, the yen is acting like he's going to be hawkish, especially if we follow through over this breakout. I'd call this an ascending triangle. Okay, so this ascending triangle here, I could draw a little line and then you'll see what the triangle looks like and what the implications of an ascending triangle are. They're bullish, right? So you have an ascending trend line and a flat top. So flat top, you could use that moving average on the four hour for that top. And it measures into the 115 range. So, you know, if we get a pullback here in the end, and then we start closing back above this 113.80, 90 level, uh, there's, you know, there's 130 pips potential. And if it gets up that far, it's possible. And, you know, that's how the, the yen is correlated to interest rates, that we could even get a new high over 115 actually for a long time i was looking for a move maybe up to 116 and a half to complete this whole pattern of one two three so uh you know that that's a possibility so my bias is to look for long entries um on a breakout in us dollar yen and that's coming in right where we are right now which would tie in with you know what's happening with say the the notes so uh 10 year notes very similar formation and so you could see how they really do correlate pretty well i'm frozen here okay so the notes uh pretty much the same thing uh, uh a little bit more of a 
I don't know if you could call it an ascending triangle, but this was what the end looks like now. This was an ascending triangle here in yields before they broke out over 136. And what a coincidence, the pullback was right back to the breakout. Now we're uh, heading up. Uh, still my contention that we're going to, uh, yields are headed higher here. Um, you know, I think the bond market is a little worried about short-term yields heading higher because the TLT um, actually bounced a little bit here this week. But when I look at this weekly bond chart, uh, to me, it's very bearish, which means, you know, you could have, uh, you're going to have higher yields. You're going to have some competition. I think long-term, uh, it may not matter for uptrends in commodities and even stocks, but if we're on our way in the bond market and the treasury market uh, back down towards 139 and break it, you're talking about sharply higher yields. You know, this measures down to 116. We haven't been there since 2018. So, I mean, 2018 must seem like ancient history to you. It does to me after all we've been through in the last few years, but um, that sharply higher yields. So uh, we'll see what the impact is. Um, I certainly would not be long treasuries into this. So um, uh, let's see if the end can complete up towards 116 and a half and that um, the 10 year begins to approach at 170 level and longer term paper, uh, I think is gonna remain under pressure and possibly break down. Now, a lot of people say there's a Fed put in equities, okay? And of course it's uh, equities is a barometer for the wealth effect. But you know what, uh, when we had COVID, you know what really had a red line was the treasuries and the Fed came in right away during COVID to put a floor on treasuries and not just treasuries, but the corporate bond market, the junk bond market. And the only one to retest uh, the COVID lows um, are the treasuries. So, you know, a lot of people are worried about corporate debt, but corporate debt hasn't been as weak as treasury debt. So let's just take a quick look at the uh, corporate debt market. I know you guys want to uh, talk about some entries and currencies, and uh, we're going to get to that. I just want to cover treasuries because, let's face it, that's what they're talking about. Um, they're talking about less money flows into treasuries. So here's LQD. Fed came in. This was much more of a crash. So what was their priority was uh, definitely um, uh, uh, treasuries because treasuries did not fall like this lower. And this is investment grade corporate debt. And then it, this was a junk market. Same type of scenario, but we've had the give back in treasuries right? Uh, we're under these lows. They weren't as low as uh, this was really a crash in corporate and high yield debt. And I think the Fed put a floor in these but, uh, without by just jawboning at first. So that's the kind of power that they had back there in COVID. Uh, so they're, you know, what I'm saying is we'll get to a point in treasuries and maybe it's, uh, you know, 116 in the TLT where they're gonna, they're gonna be concerned. And uh, even if the stock market is uh, under pressure, they're gonna, they're gonna put a, uh, some type of stop to that type of yield rise. In fact, I don't think the US government could sustain that either uh, with those uh, interest rates on the size of our debt compared to GDP. So uh, let's, let's talk about the dollar here. So I was thinking that the dollar was going to pull back this week. You know, we still haven't made a new high. Maybe that happens after the Fed because they're not as hawkish and we get a pullback. Um, if, the, if that's the case, I would go with what's already demonstrating pretty good relative strength. And that's uh, the Aussie. You know, we're putting in a higher low. Um, we're much further off the lows here in Aussie than we are in euro 
So uh, Euro looks like it could, you know, push the lows. I still think that there's a chance if we get a pullback in the dollar that we could have a pop in the Euro back towards this 114 level. So, and I'm a seller if this happens in the next couple of days, that take us down to 95 because um, I'm still in the camp with confirmed lows down here in the daily. This wasn't the low in the Euro. I'm looking for about uh, 110 and a half um, on a cash basis. I've already started converting US dollars into euros. And to me, when uh, cash, I'm hoping for lower numbers to continue, continue with no leverage to accumulate euros. Um, looking at the gold, we didn't even get any kind of bounce, uh, you know, back towards 1810. Gold, you know, does, it looks like a, a new low is very viable. Um, silver on the verge of doing it too. We've had no bounce, but let me point something out in silver. You know, I'm going to be looking for buys. I've been pointing out long term buys based upon the confluence that I have off this wedge line, um, shade under 20, but there are some FIB numbers at 2050. I may start there. And then you have the 200 week moving average. What's going to be important to me, besides the price of silver, is what's happening in the gold silver ratio, okay, which is has been heading higher, okay. And this move in the gold silver ratio is beginning to diverge. So the case for silver is made when this index is heading lower, like it did from its historical peak of 128. So now we're headed towards some very important resistance up here. If you wanna be conservative, you wait till we close back under 80. Um, but uh, this is uh, before I really get aggressively long silver, I need this to end. And it, you know, if we're gonna break out, you, you know, maybe this is a head and shoulders formation and we start breaking out over 82 you know we could uh rally up to here 38 percent 50 percent and this kind of rally i think would be a risk off play where gold's outperforming or holding up better than silver and that means silver's uh getting hammered towards that 19 dollar level and gold's holding up better because it's more of a fear hedge and a monetary hedge but for me to really get aggressively bullish silver, I need this ratio to turn. Right now, the people, you know, you're not getting hurt as much being long gold as you are being long silver while this is heading up. So stay tuned for updates on uh, the gold silver ratio. It's gonna be an important part of making the bull case in silver down here um, I think they'll take out the big round number of 20. And this was a major breakout here. So, you know, it almost looks like it's destiny under 20 into the 19 range. And by then, perhaps we're getting, like we are already getting some divergences on some shorter term stuff in the gold silver ratio. You could see right here that these highs are not confirming right here okay here's your confirmed high your last confirmed high uh this did not confirm this did not confirm so you know we could be within a few days of this also topping you'll know uh if you're the first sign of it really um topping out would be close it's back under 30 under 80 excuse me under 80 okay um you guys know that i've been talking about the negative side of uh, NASDAQ, especially since it made a lower high that was pointed out last week. We're really on the cusp here of uh, something that could turn out to be pretty negative. So um, I'm hoping that the Fed generates a rally in NASDAQ. And to me, that's gonna be a rally to sell. So I'm gonna leave you with this one. Should uh, the market think that the Fed um, isn't as hawkish as they had early, earlier anticipated and you get a 230 point rally 
back towards 16190, 162, I'm a seller in NASDAQ. And that's for a couple of reasons. Uh, it's interesting this, uh, uh, well, I've interviewed her here on TradeGate of uh, Helene Meisler. And um, she came up with the acronym for the market. She called it an NBA market, nothing but Apple, right? So Apple's up a little bit. And we had a nice little reversal, still a confirmed high. But, you know, I could see this market testing 68. Uh, it really needs to hold 64. Uh, I, you know, I, this was really the strongest chart of, uh, you know, the fangs. Uh, Microsoft really took it on the chin with a failing rally. That looks bearish to me. It could rally, but I'd sell it. Um, Netflix doesn't look that great to me either anymore amazon doesn't look that great to me tesla even uh tesla um the last guy <clears throat> um fang name that uh ceo that was on time magazine's cover was jeff bezos i forgot the year i think it was right before the dot-com bust in 2000 and amazon lost 90 percent of its value good luck Good luck, uh, Elon. And I think that's uh, about all I want to cover here. We'll see what happens with uh, the dollar. Keep in mind, you know, you don't have to trade it. You know, we're only 150 pips away from where I'm calling a target, 97 and a half to 98 in the dollar. You know, I don't have to be there for the last phase. Sometimes the last phase is the biggest pain phase, but I think that we're heading up into an important dollar high this year. And I think it's uh, in the first quarter. And I've been talking about this battleground of about 98 or so coming up. So, you know, I don't, I could just wait for that to happen. Uh, without trading anything today. Uh, the one trade I, I do have a, uh, probably the most conviction on right now is uh, uh, being long uh, US dollar yen for one more high. And remember, you know, no one has a gun to your head that you have to do anything in front of the Fed. But if you are in of the mind of trading, do not bet red or black prior to these announcements and press conferences uh, to try and guess which way the market's going to go because no one knows. Uh, sometimes I think even Paul doesn't know. And maybe he doesn't care as much because he can't front run his meetings or, or the other Fed governors for that matter. I don't think I'll ever get over that one. I mean, we work hard to be right, okay? And we use candles and experience and pattern recognition. And, you know, they know being part of the Fed, what the Fed is going to do. Wow. Sure hope they didn't lose money with that edge. So good luck today. Remember? You know, uh, it's okay to do nothing. The markets will be here after the Fed, after Christmas, after New Year's, when all the volume comes back. But if you're of a mind to trade, sell that rally. I'd look to sell that rally in NASDAQ. And I'd look for long entries in US dollar yen. And also, if you're a debt trader, you know, maybe buy TBT, look for uh, a bearish ETF on, on yields, HYG, buy, you know, could buy puts. So bearish bonds going into it anyway. And that's a wrap. So me and Mario Draghi playing uh, all along the watchtower when he said, I'll do anything, I'll do everything to bring the value of the Euro down. There's a plain speaker. And that's a wrap. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Uh, I'm bringing back Patrick Kareem for tomorrow. Long-term uh, precious metal bull. 
a good time to bring them on when these metals are under pressure and maybe I could pull some uh, entry points and I'll see if he still has the same conviction for three digits, uh, you know, silver over a hundred dollars in the coming years. So good luck, trade safely, trade small and wait for the reaction. And I'll see everyone tomorrow for my interview here on TradeGate Hub with Patrick Kareem.